In this video I'm going to go over the male reproductive system in terms of hormones and functions of the anatomy. You need to watch the other video that actually identifies the parts on the models that we will be using in lab. Alright, so we'll start with basic anatomy. We're going to go through the testes, the epididymis, the vest deferens, uh, the seminal vesicle, prostate gland, bulbourethra gland, and through the penis. And again, I'll go through functions in this video, but again, make sure you watch the video that uses the model that you will be tested on. Uh, before we get into the parts and what they do, I want to get into the hormonal control. The brain part looks very much like the female. There's a similarity there. If you cut off, cut out the brain and looked at a female brain and a male brain, the hormones would actually be the same. Um, up here is a hormone that's going to come from the hypothalamus called gonadotropic releasing hormone. Uh, it's not on here, but you just put GNRH, gonadotropic releasing hormone, GNRH. That's the abbreviation I will use. And when it's secreted, it causes the secretion of luteinizing hormone and FSH and again you just need to know the abbreviations FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary in a male what this does is the LH causes a secretion of testosterone the production of testosterone in the testes testosterone then does several things a secondary sex characteristics like uh, facial hair deeper voice more muscle mass and so on and then it also allows for sperm production uh, once testosterone secretion begins at puberty. FSH also plays a role in sperm production. It allows for mature sperm to develop. So without FSH, uh, you will not get proper sperm production. So both these hormones are needed in order for sperm production to occur. And then testosterone has a secondary effect of the secondary sex characteristics. So that's pretty much what you need to know for the males and hormones. Uh, males do not cycle like females. Uh, there has been research shown that male hormone levels may cycle in a 64-day cycle, but it's not as extreme as what you see in the female. First, we're going to talk about parts of the sperm. Again, you have the model you need to be looking at, but we have what's called the acrosome, which sits over the head of the sperm. Um, I kind of have this cartoon drawing, which shows it as a hat, and it will contain enzymes that will break down the outer coating of the egg, of the oocyte. In the female video, you will learn about the follicle. When the oocyte is released, there are cells around that oocyte that need to be broken down in order for fertilization to occur. The head is what contains the chromosomes and it contains 23 chromosomes. The midpiece is behind the head and it contains a mitochondria and this mitochondria as you should know is going to make ATP that's going to allow the sperm to be able to swim. And behind this midpiece is the flagella, the tail, a simple way to say it, and again the ATP that's produced by this midpiece will allow for the flagella to move, allowing the sperm to travel up the reproductive tract of the female. Okay, so the scrotum. The scrotum is located outside the body, and this is because sperm will not develop at body temperature. They need to be three to four degrees cooler, so they are located outside the body. Um, a major cause of infertility in females, is, or males, sorry, males, is that the scrotum is too close to the body from wearing too tight of pants. Uh, they get too warm, and that means the, it gets too warm for the sperm to develop. But do not count on that as a method of birth control. The testes are within the scrotum, and this is where sperm production actually occurs. It specifically occurs within the seminiferous tubules, which are in the testes. So if I ask you function of the testes or the seminiferous tubules, the answer is the same. On the models, you cannot see the seminiferous tubules within the testes. The epididymis is where the sperm will travel once they are produced by the testes. In the testes, if you take sperm from the testes, which they do in some fertility, issues, infertility issues, the sperm are not capable of fertilizing an egg coming straight out of the testes. So they will go to the epididymis, and I call this the sperm swim camp, where they will mature as sperm, becoming more capable of swimming. They will then stay in the epididymis until ejaculation would occur. During ejaculation, the sperm will then travel up the vas deferens. Now the accessory glands are going to add secretions to the sperm. Uh, 
So when you hear the word semen, semen is actually sperm plus these secretions, plus these secretions. And we're going to talk about those secretions and the accessory glands in the next few slides. So just an idea here, when a male has a vasectomy, what they will do is they will uh, cauterize, snip and cauterize the vas deferens and so there can be no sperm, there can be mo no sperm that are released from the testes because they can't get through the vas deferens. But a male can still have an ejaculation because he will still be able to ejaculate, ejaculate those secretions that are coming from the accessory glands. So in reality, uh, people think some people have this myth that a vasectomy ruins a man's sex life. In most cases, it actually improves it because the fear of pregnancy is not there. But again, ejaculation still occurs and the sexual pleasure is still the same. One of the accessory glands is the seminal vesicles. It will contribute about 60% of the semen secretion. What it's going to do, it's going to add fructose, which is a sugar, and that sugar is going to be used by that mitochondria in the uh, mid piece to make ATP to allow the sperm to travel. Coagulating enzyme is also secreted from the seminal vesicles. What actually happens is when sperm are ejaculated, they kind of come together after that. I always call it like the sperm huddle. And what that is, is when they're secreted or ejaculated into the vagina, the vagina is not a very conducive area for sperm to develop. So what they do is they come together and the sperm on the outside may be destroyed by the acidity of the vagina, but it protects the sperm from the in, on the inside of that huddle as they travel up the vagina. They also secrete pr 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 prost prostaglandin, sorry, prostaglandins, prostaglandins are going to assist in uterine contraction and so during sex these prostaglandins will stimulate the uterus to contract which is going to move the sperm up towards the oocyte in the oviducts. The prostate gland also contributes 30 percent of the semen. It's going to produce and contribute citrate which is a nutrient, several enzymes that are going to activate the sperm and something called prostate specific antigen which plays a role in activating the sperm. You also hear about PSA for uh, men over 50 getting a PSA count. If there is possible prostate cancer in too many cells the PSA numbers can go up and so it's used as a test to maybe determine if a man has prostate cancer or not. It's not as good a test as we had hoped. Many men have false positives where their PSA numbers are high and they don't have cancer and some men have cancer and their PSA levels are normal. So it's still used as a guide but it's not as good as we once thought it would be in diagnosing prostate cancer. The last accessory organ is the bulbourethra gland. It's going to secrete a mucus prior to ejaculation that's going to go through the urethra. Um, the urethra is where urine transports through also and that urine can make the urethra acidic which is not a very good environment with for the sperm. So this mucus that comes from the bulbourethra urethra gland is going to try to neutralize that urethra to increase the number of sperm that survive the trip. An erection is basically controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system it is about blood flow. Um, it's not about, there's no bones in the penis, there is no muscles in the penis. What happens is blood flow increases into the penis and the amount that leaves is going to decrease which causes the erection. So it's about blood pressure. It's about blood pressure. So the veins from the penis do not drain because they're kind of cut off um, from the spongy tissue due to the spongy tissue and that is what causes an erection. Ejaculation is the semen being secreted from the epididymis through the vas deferens out the urethra into the world and this process of ejaculation is actually controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Um, it's referred to as a climax or an orgasm in a male. So again the sperm are released and then they will swim off and if in a female they will possibly cause fertilization if it happens during the proper time in a female's cycle. So that is the basics of the functions of the male parts that you need to know. Again please watch 
the video that goes through the anatomy that goes through the anatomy on the models that will be used in lab.